Hi Booktube and welcome to a new video. This is a tag video. This is the Kalia Bookshelves tag by a new Booktuber. This is his uh, you know, first tag and well done. That is Kieran of KD Books. Uh, I believe Kieran is from Wales. I haven't gone and checked out his video yet. I will do. I'll post the link to it because I was tagged by Sean the Book Maniac. And uh, here we go. What is the most recent book you've added to your bookshelves? Why did you purchase it? Okay. Obviously, in lockdown, I'm not going to bookstores, so it's rather sort of quixotic as to what book I ordered turns up when. So this wasn't the last book I bought, technically. But it was the last book that arrived and I was able to put on my bookshelves. Uh, this is Minor Detail by the Palestinian writer Adania Shibley. I reviewed it in this week's um, reading wrap-up because uh, I've already read it. It's only 100 pages. It's a quick read. Um, why did I buy it? Because I like the sound of it. It's about uh, sort of Palestinian, Israeli conflict, but it's it's it has a lot to recommend it, having read the book. Um, but I was attracted to its subject matter, I guess. Plus, I'm, I haven't read many Palestinian women authors before. Prop two. What book did you buy with absolutely no desire to read it? Well, <sighs> I can't answer that. 100% in the tone in which it was asked. So this book is one that I bought uh, with no attention to reading it. This is Ted Morgan, a biography of William S. Burroughs called Literary Outlaw. And I've no intention of reading it because I've read it, but not this edition. What happened was uh, regular followers of my channel will know I had a massive attack of mould in my shed where a lot of uh, my books are kept. And the original copy of this succumbed to that. It was a hardback. Uh, yeah, it's probably a better co cover as well. So I was sad to lose that. But I wanted to uh, still have this in my collection. You know, I'm not a completist. I'm a bit, you know, sort of on whim what, what stays in my collection and, 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 you know, what I'm not bothered by. Uh, and I wanted to have this, even though I will never read it again. Uh, and the other version is American Dirt by Janine Cummins. Yes, this controversial book. Uh, when I bought it, before it came out, I ordered it. I had no idea of the controversy attached to it. And by the time it arrived, that was just when the controversy was breaking out about it. And lots of booktubers whose uh, judgment and values I trust have sort of put me off reading this, to be honest. So I may go back to it once all the furor has died down, but equally I may not. I don't know. But I'm certainly not going to be reading it this year. But when I bought it... I didn't have the intention I wasn't going to read it. So though between that and the Burroughs biography, that's the closest I've come to this prompt. Three, what is the most awkward shape size of book you own? Well, I've got three that I think come into that. One is one of my favourite books, one of my favourite authors. This is Jeff New, Needle in the Groove. Now, again, this is a replacement copy because the original I had uh, was moulded to death. And this is the one they sent... Uh, as a replacement. I didn't realise it was this size. It's tiny. If you hold it to a sort of a normal book. Um, so, as it happens, Jeff Noon doesn't have... I don't have a sci-fi shelf. I don't have it... Well, I did used to have a sci-fi shelf, but the whole shelf was wiped out by mould. And I, I haven't taken enough... Um, sci-fi sort of books that I wanted to sort of reorder to keep them in my collection. This is one of the few. Um, so Jeff Noon, strangely, sort of has a... I don't know if you can see down there. Jeff Noon sort of has a section with Victor Pelevin uh, of other books, um, but there's no real rhyme or reason to this, other than they don't have their own place on, on my other shelves. Um, I had I owned a lot more Noon and a lot more Pelevin than just what's stored there. So that's one of the awkward size books. Another is this beauty, uh, The Beastie Boys, a book written by two of the surviving members, Adam Horowitz and Mike Diamond. What a great book this is. The book chemist recently uh, reviewed it on his channel, so go check it out. But I, lo I love this book. I mean, I love The Beastie Boys, but this, is, this isn't just an ordinary musical autobiography or biography. Um... There's a lot more to it than, than that, and sort of stylistically and structurally it's put together in a really interesting way. Mm. Um, but, it, but it is, you know, a whopper. My dream is the books here on the top shelf of this thing all belong to my son, who at the moment is at university. Uh, this is his pleasure reading. And um, my dream is that when he eventually leaves home, um, if he ever leaves home, I will bring down all my uh, non-fiction and reference books 
and they will live there and that will free up another shelf there for my non for my fiction and obviously this Beastie Boys book will then have a natural home because it will be on that shelf um, with uh, with all my other non-fiction and the third one it's not the size so much it's uh, it's a fantastic sort of book called The Body and the Encyclopedia of Archetypal Symbolism and it's exactly that it's quite Jungian in that respect but it is very very much drawn from all cultures across the world if that that's the back of it just to give you an idea and that's the front you can see all the different sort of icons and stuff and it's awkward because to get it out I mean first of all you can see that it's sort of come apart it's quite old this book now um, but whenever I pull it out it's impossible to get back in there so it's not the size so much it's it's the you know I'm loath to throw this away but it is sort of defeating its own purpose really Show four, show and tell. How do you arrange your shelves? Is there a method to the madness? Well, I'm not going to do an, an another shelves tour because I've had a couple of recent videos where I've, I've picked up the camera and got my mobile and trailed them. But I basically, after the mould attack, um, I had one of three surviving books, one of three bookshelves survived, and that's still out in the shed. Two, I had to destroy the bookshelves, and one, probably the equivalent of one shelf, one whole stack I had to throw those books out so I had to find somewhere for the for the third stack the books there that had survived so I bought two new bookshelves and brought them inside the house and this contains the books that I want close to me with and around me the shared books and more those that um, I'm near about and I'll, I'll come back more to the concept of the shed later so just quickly on on the shelves um, Top two are women's fiction. Next one down is European fiction. What happens if a woman is from Europe? Good question. It can go on either. Fourth shelf down is uh, British authors. Last shelf down is rest of the world. Then on the other stack, uh, top shelf, as I already said, is non-fiction. Then we have uh, the second shelf of British writers. And we have three shelves of American writers in decreasing order of conventionality so the most sort of radical and postmodern first uh, and underneath this this unit is my to be read pile that's basically it um five how often do you have a book coal well i don't really um i had the mold which was a natural coal but i don't i've got enough space between the shed and here now i mean i've this prompt has reminded me i really need to get on it and order one book stack for the shed because the books there are being to pile up without having anywhere to put them on shelves. So I need to get that to gear. While we're in lockdown, I can build the shelf for the kit. Um, so I don't really need to have coals. Um, six. How do you decide if you're going to keep a book or give it away? Well, I, as I say, I mean, I don't, I don't give books away. But having said that, the coronavirus came at a very bad time because uh, we were sort of locked down or sent home from work so towards middle end of March when I had just completed a novel and I'd also just passed 1,000 subscribers and I wanted to sort of jointly celebrate those with a book giveaway um, but of course there's no real way that I'm going to venture out to a post office with packages you know I don't do eBay selling or anything so I'm not in the habit of it I have none of the stuff you need like envelopes and, and all of that so my book giveaway <laughs> Uh, to celebrate a thousand subscribers uh, plus actually uh, by the time I get, we're able to do it I'll probably have written another novel but that's a different story um, so I'm going to do that whenever the, the lockdown is lifted and normal life has resumed but one book I will show that will be part of that that giveaway is this beautiful looking book William S Burroughs and the Cult of Rock and Roll by Casey Ray which looks at Burroughs' re uh, relationship to lots and lots of musicians and the influence he's had on them with two rather beautiful men on the cover being David Bowie and William Burroughs. Uh, another th um, what is a contender for the oldest unread book on your shelves? I wasn't sure about this but sort of I did a quick skim and I think these are two rather sort of classic novels and because they, you know, I may, may be un, unkind or unfair to them when I, they strike me as a bit too conventional for my taste. One is Stoner by um, John Williams and the other is Sophie's World by Jostine Gard Garder. Um, I don't know, I may get to them one day. But, you know, they've been, 
The gardener was given to me. So that's probably been there about eight years. The stone I bought myself, I don't know, six, eight years. There probably are books that have been there longer, but I couldn't think which ones they were. Um, what book have you read and is currently on your shelves that you would struggle to give a summary on what actually happened in it? Ah, OK. Um, I've got two books for that. So this is Tokyo Cancelled by British Indian author Rana Dasgupta. So I read his book called uh, Solo, which I loved, set in Bulgaria and Georgia. Um, and was brilliant and I, you know this was his sort of more famous novel really and it's basically a group of people who are um, marooned in an airport lounge by uh, the weather in Tokyo and they all start telling each other stories to pass the time but I couldn't see to what end I couldn't see what relationship the story had to the storyteller no one seemed to have a reaction to the story after it was told the stories didn't seem to interlock in any way and why would they because these travellers are from all over the world what have they got in common with each other other than they're gathered together in the airport lounge. So I was absolutely baffled by this book and did not enjoy it. Now the other is uh, Michel Hoerbeck's Serotonin, his latest book, and it's on the long, no, short list, long list for the Man Booker International Prize, which I don't think has been announced. I think they pushed that back because of the coronavirus. I may have that wrong. Uh, and I love Hoerbeck. I am a completist. I have all of his books, which is the reason I've kept this because it's not very good. There's lo I know what, what the elements involved are, I understand them, but I don't know what's, what point and story he was trying to put together. It seems to me a bit of floggy and dead horse, because all of Hoelbeck's books are about Hoelbeck in one way or another, but he sort of does enough work to make the characters interesting and not just self-indulgent. Um, but I couldn't see to what end with this one, so having read it, I'm none the wiser what it's about, what it's for, why it exists other than probably a contractual obligation. Um, nine. Some books are to be cherished. Which book would you never throw or give away? Well, there's two. Again, both by Jeff Noon. Um, but it's, it's strange enough, it doesn't make him my favourite author, despite the fact that I've highlighted three of his books that are my all-time favourites. This is very simply... Uh, this is the 25th anniversary edition of Vert, which is perhaps his most firm but famous book. And it is... signed by the author uh, and I won this in a Twitter competition where Jeff Noon who does a lot of sort of writing on Twitter in, in you know writing novels through tweets uh, basically said send him a you know everyone should send him a science fiction one tweet story this was in the days when Twitter only gave you 140 characters up to 180 and I won <laughs> and that's what he sent me uh, and the other is Cobra Lingus Jeff Noon uh, there's two reasons I won't give this away. One, because it's a fantastic book. Two, because it's bloody hard to get. It's out of print. I had to wait eight years tracking this down, and eventually I found it on eBay in the UK for £16, which is expensive, but actually, compared to most of the prices I've seen quoted for it, is a great deal. And it's just a brilliant book about language visually as well as... It sort of take, takes uh, William Burroughs and Brian Geisen's cut-up method on another stage because it shows you all the steps of the mutation of the text it's just wonderful I've talked extensively about this if I remember I'll post the link to a radio podcast where I talk about this amongst two other books um, 10 don't throw those books away I don't um, out of the ones you've discussed oh well, I haven't discussed this one uh, choose one to actually send to someone close to you or arrange to send it to another booktuber well, I, I'm thinking of sending this to another booktuber, but it will be, as I say, when the lockdown's lifted. Why have you chosen this book for them? OK, so this is Dave Eggers. This is The Captain and the Glory, which is a spoof about Trump, um, where a Trump-like captain of a ship, uh, which is boarded and taken over by pirates, and it's satire. And I am going to send this to Brian over at Bookish because Brian is very entertaining with his um, political analysis and invective against Trump on Twitter. Uh, I think he might appreciate it more than I did. I thought this was a sort of sledgehammer to, to crack a nut, really. Uh, but Brian might get more out of it than I will. Uh, but the other thing I, I would like to send is A, to a non-booktuber, uh, and B is not a book, but it is bookish. So I have four finger puppets. I have uh, Joyce Brecht, 
uh, and Michel Foucault and Kurt Vonnegut, who's the best of them all in terms of, you know, that is Kurt Vonnegut. Brilliant sort of puppet. Um, and I'm going to send it to a writer friend of mine uh, who's, as I say, not on BookTube because he's a big Vonnegut fan. Uh, so unless he sees this, it will be a nice surprise when it turns up. So um, you can cull books, but you can't cull friends. Uh, tag some people. So uh, I am going to tag uh, Todd the Librarian, uh, Celia, Elizabeth at Bookish North. Um, I never damn prepare this, which is really stupid of me. I think Brian at Bookish was tagged by Sean, so he's excused duty. Um, anyone who wants to do it, there, that's the get out. Oh, I missed one out. Yes, no, I didn't miss one out. I want to go back to one of them. Um, how do you decide if you're going to keep a book or give it away? Stroke which was prompt six, with stroke five, how often do you have a book cull? Five. And I said I don't have a book cull, uh, in the sense I don't give them away. But I do have a type of book cull, which returns us back to the shed. So since the mould outbreak, the shed has very much come a sort of um, depository of the, of the books that, you know, I'm not that bothered about. I don't feel psychologically I need to keep them close to hand. I'm not going to reread them. They're not going to serve as, you know, for me to dig into them for references or anything. Um, so it's very much the sort of um, social pariah section of my book collection. Um, and periodically, you know, I take the books that I've read here. They don't deserve to go on the shelves in the house. They will be banished to the shed. So of the books uh, I've read this, this year, just to give you an example, The Discomfort of the Evening by Marieke Lucas Reinwell, which is also Man Booker longlisted. Lullaby by Leila Slimani. Um, Martha Wells' All Systems Red, the first book in the Murderbot uh, series. Uh, Lissa Evans, Their Finest. The Collected Short Stories of Bertolt Brecht. Monique Roffey, House of Ashes. Music, Love, Drugs, War by Geraldine Quigley, which I did a whole video of why the writing of this book, why the writing style in this book annoyed me. I'll post a link to that. Steve Aylett, Lint, which has been one of the few books that I did not finish. And in a way, this could have answered the um, what book have you read and is currently on your shelves that you'd struggle to give a summary of what actually happened in it. Uh, the reason I didn't offer this to that is because it's not going to be on my shelves in the house. It's going to be banished to the, to the shed. So uh, there you have it. That is my response. Thank you, Kieran. An excellent uh, tag, especially given that's your first one. That was fully rounded. Um, so till next time, thanks very much.